uh, we have a friend today, Dave Gilbert. You probably wow, know. royalty, adventure game royalty. In our exactly, <laughs> gentlemen. This is the Adventure Game Hotspot Podcast. How are you I'm doing a, today? I'm a royal something. I don't, I don't know what. <laughs> so um, with Dave comes a whole bunch of, of of industry goodies, knowledge, and 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 some fun thoughts. And we're gonna we're gonna freeze. Apparently, <laughs> hello. <laughs> That's an interesting expression. That is not. <laughs> that's not a good place to to, to freeze on. Let's hope it. it, it picks we could all make up. that same expression just for yeah. solidarity. Oh man, it I don't works. know exactly when it happened. I think it might have been. I think I noticed it at least right before unavowed that that you became sort of a name that was promoted on its own, like a new Dave mm -hmm. Gilbert game and a new Wajidai game, and mainstream sites were picking it up too. It wasn't so niche anymore. Did you notice that you'd sort of reached? sort of a different level of demographic or audience or um, well it's i think it's just by virtue of having just just uh, i don't know longevity. what word it is longevity <laughs> and just like a snowball effect i just was, was i just kept going yeah. and also i started during a time when there weren't um many adventure games not just adventure games but there were very few indie games in general yeah. Um, the indie mm -hmm. game scene was very small in, in 2006. I, I think, I don't even think people were using the term indie oh, yet. Does, yeah. um, I don't want to think about who's got my credit card now, but <laughs> back then it's just like people would mail me cash, you know, like in foreign currencies. I'd have to like go across town to get it changed. It was oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of started very small and grew very organically from there. And I think at this point, I have a firm enough foundation that I feel quite secure. Um, even if a game maybe doesn't sell gangbusters, I don't think it's going to like bomb. I think we have enough like of a fan base that are interested in most everything we do. Um, not to say we need to phone it in, but at the same time, like <laughs> I, I'm, I'm confident enough that like when I make an announcement, people will hear it. Ooh. I don't well, know. I think what, what really was the turning point for us. And it's like, I hate to say this one, like this one game is what, what, Right, it is because it's like it, it's everything that kind of came before it. I'd say yeah. Gemini Ru was the big watershed moment because so, okay. somehow that game, and we didn't write that one, we we published it. Um, we it somehow broke out of like the the bubble, like the adventure game niche bubble echo chamber. It somehow broke out of that, and it managed to reach like more like hardcore mainstream, you know, press sites like rock, rock paper shotgun was writing about it. Um, giant bomb was a, was a huge deal. Like mm -hmm. they, they wrote about us. They did like a let's play of, of, of the game and sent so much traffic our way. Like they, wow. they really helped us out so much. I actually made a deal with them to like, you know, I gave them you know their fans like a coupon code to use. Cause I just, I knew like, okay, this, this was working, but Gemini Aru was definitely the big moment where it's like, Oh, okay. Like, I th I, th I think we got something like we're we're gonna be we're gonna be around for a while. This is working. Well, yeah. Like for a hot minute, like cute pixel games were like really really big because you had like Diner Dash and some some of those mm -hmm. games, and mm -hmm. um, those games were really really popular. And so for like a hot minute, I got I got in just at the just when that was big, and my first month on all those casual sites. I earned more money than I had like in my entire career put together up to that point. So I need to just, I'm just going to focus on the games that I personally like yeah. and games that I either want to make or want to see or what have you. Um, and that instinct has kind of steered me right. Cause I, th I think like that sincerity is very important. Um, the audience can sense when you're phoning it in. Right now, I kind of want to talk about Wadget Eye, the business, the team, so okay. you mentioned you tried to keep it small, and I'm sure you started out small. Like, where is Wajadai at this point? Well, how in how terms of mm -hmm. in terms of full time people, mm -hmm. it's me and Ben Chandler. He's mm -hmm. he does all the art, and in terms of full time people, mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, I I hired a freelance writer to kind of help me out with old skies, uh, and of course I've worked with composers and. Uh, and you know the voice actors, but those are kind of as needed. There's no one else that I pay like full time. Um, there's a, there's a, a guy named James Spanos, who I, I hired kind of to help me with additional tech stuff, mm -hmm. um, things like porting and fixing bugs and stuff. Just you know, uh, tedious technical things that individually are probably no big deal, but those things multiplied by like eighteen some odd games is a lot of work. So he he does that for me. Um, but those are, and that's it, really. So and 
and that's the game development side. Now you're also in in the distribution side. You're you're in the publishing side. Yeah. Who handles that? Is I mean, obviously also you. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also just me. How, um, how different is that than from from the other side of Wajedi Games? Well, it's different, and it's different now. Now I'm a little bit more hands off than I used to be. I'm still involved because I, I feel like if my if the, my brand name is on it, mm -hmm. I want to make sure it's something I like. But excuse me. Um, but you typically how it works is you know I'll spend three years or so working on something of mine, and I'm burnt out. Mm -hmm. And then I it's nice to help other people with their projects for a while, um, because having you know not being the developer myself. I can kind of take that, uh, keep a bit of distance, you know, help them get it made, help with the voice acting, you know, um, help with design here and there, and I, I, I get, I don't have that the same pressure that I would for my own stuff, and that's sometimes very nice. But then, of course, after a few years, I, I get a little prima donna ish, like enough helping all these people out with their visions <laughs> what about me damn it and then i want to do my own stuff again uh and so i do i kind of take a break from publishing and i i focus on my own stuff again i just sort of go with a gut feeling if i like something or not or how busy i am whatever um my instincts have been more right than wrong for which i'm very grateful do, do you go looking for games do developers come and talk to you and say hey we're doing this game or it varies um, it, it's so there's, like I said, there's no rhyme or reason. I'll sometimes talk to a developer and then one thing lead, will lead to another and I'll be like, Hey, maybe we could help each other out with Hobbs Barrow. It was, um, it was funny because I had played their demo and I, I just loved the, the sense of time and place that it created. Um, and, but I felt that it was just screaming for voice acting. Mm -hmm. And I, I contacted the, de the developer, um, Sean Aitchison, or Aitchison. Oh my God, I, I'm terrible. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he, I, I just talked to him about it. I said, please tell me you're adding voice acting to this because it so desperately needs it. Mm -hmm. um, and he says, well, if we could find a publisher who'll help us with that. And that basically was how I became the publisher. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pure... Was there, was there any that you said hits you in the right moment that you, you said, okay. I have to put my name on this. I actively, I'm going after this game. It's something that that you just put put it in your sights and, and went after it. Ah, so anything I really just win after. I mean, there's games where I like the look of, and mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, could I? Could I? I like the look of this. Could I see more? Because often, if a game is at that stage where it's really polished and really, um, you know, really good, they don't need need your help. Yeah. But sometimes I can see, I could see the potential, and I. Primordia was like that. Like I saw, like I just saw the art and I'm like, this looks really cool. And I just, could, could I see more? I might be interested in publishing this. And I ended up publishing it, but it wasn't like I chased after them and wined and dined them or anything like that. Right. Couldn't <laughs> afford that anyway. Um, I don't think you'd need to. Uh, <laughs> uh, Red, well, I'm a little interested that go, when can it, we meet? Well, and this where? was like back in 20. 2010 so i was, I was well yeah I guess. but um resonance was kind of like that where where it just looked so good and in fact it was because of how good resonance looked that that encouraged me to like hire a professional artist for blackwell convergence because i'm like oh this is my competition now and, and if, if, if we knew what was marketable like no one would make a bad game like if, right. if we knew what if we if there was a way to quantify what makes a good game we'd all be making good games and sure that, there's kind of a look that people came to associate with Wadidai. Like that is that true. part of your philosophy in terms of the games that you chose to publish and not just not develop? Really? I mean, it's just I think because I've kind of dug a little niche from niche, niche, niche for myself. Uh, now I'm gonna put you on the spot here. You said that there's games that you said no to. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> is there any that you said no to and later on you're like Ooh, <laughs> wish I did. Uh, I mean, kind of yes, kind of no. I mean, I said no to Kathy Rain. They've approached mm -hmm. me, and they ended up going with Ralph Yuri, who I think is a better fit. But I but it still requires, as you said, a bit of a distancing. Is is that difficult for you to do to to step back and let someone else run? Not run things, but 
No. Are you a um, micromanager, Dave? I mean, well, depends which developer you ask. Uh, <laughs> some would say I am. I generally don't think I am. I mean, Sean has said this in interviews, so it's I don't think he'll mind if I if I uh, say it out loud. When I, the first build I played, there was um the the main villain of the game you never actually saw in the game, and mm -hmm. my feedback to him for him was we should see him in the game. He needs mm -hmm. to be a part of the story. Um, and they agreed and they put him in the story and it's, you can't imagine the game without him now. I have, I'm, I'm pretty confident if something doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so often I'll, I'll try to make alternate suggestions and work with the developer that way. You earlier, you mentioned that you are hands-on when it comes to voice acting. It's there something that you're, you're passionate about. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. I want to talk about that. I want to talk okay. a little bit about that. I This could, we could spend the rest of the interview talking about voice acting because I could talk about it forever. Mm -hmm. It's something, it's, it's so different. And I just became obsessed with learning about it. And I, I just started learning, becoming friends with more voice actors, started working with more voice actors. And it just became my favorite thing to do. And that was my... That, that was another epiphany moment, huh, no pun intended, Hobbs Barrow, for the first session. Um, it's funny because I asked, the town the game takes place in is called Bewley. And I only saw it written down and I asked Sean, how do you pronounce it? And since it was all text, he says, you know, um, pronounced like new, but he's British. Ah, so for uh, him, yeah. his, with his accent, it would be new. Mm. But for me, that's it's new. new. So for the first session, they were all calling it Bully. Boo. <laughs> and I ran it by him and he's like, no, that's wrong. I'm like, oh, crap. I'm sorry. So I had to, for those lines, I had to do pickups later. But mm -hmm. with a lot of voice acting, it's it's less about believing what's on the page. It's more about feeling what's on the page. Because, like, if uh, the microphone is intimate, like, you can't lie. If you're... If you're angry and you're trying to fake it, the microphone will pick that up. So it's like you have to feel that emotion. If your character is angry, you have to find a way to be angry. All right, let, let, let's have a little fun. Let's, okay. let's kind of shake it off. Shake it off for a, a little second. Alrighty. We're going to put right. we're gonna put two minutes on the clock. Uh -oh. Okay, and then we're going to blow right past two minutes. So so we're going to ask some questions. And Jack, feel free to jump in here if, right. with any if you want. We're gonna, I'm going to throw a bunch at you. Okay. Answer as quick as possible. Dave, what is your favorite food? Um, that would be Tex-Mex fajitas. Tex-Mex fajitas. Love them. Okay. Cat or dog? I consider myself a dog person, but I own a cat because I live on a third floor walk-up. Favorite adventure game? Um, modern or classic? Favorite adventure. Uh, no, no, matter. no. He, okay, I was, uh, without, thinking, without thinking, without yeah. thinking. Well, okay, uh, I would say classic Loom. Most recently, uh, Perfect Tides. Mm. Oh, wow! Two, two. Okay, okay. Favorite, uh, favorite genre of music. Oh, good God! Uh, <laughs> it just so depends what I need at the time. I've become very uh, interested in. I, I just because I'm working, I'm listening to a lot of classical stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm listening to a lot of, uh, I've really gotten into Mozart's Requiem for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I listen to that all the time, uh, I guess, cause I just, it helps me focus. So I'm going to go with that. Favorite genre of movies. Uh, I like everything. There's nothing, I, I, I like everything. I, I mostly gravitate to sci-fi though. So I'll stick Let's with that. Let's say favorite movie. Oh my God. This changes like all the time <laughs> i will i will say sci-fi i'll say i enjoy sci-fi okay. i enjoy science fiction stuff dark side or light side dark siders always die but they have cooler outfits so <laughs> i'm gonna go with them favorite non-adventure game uh knights of the old republic nice mm. nice what's your favorite thing to do on your downtime read favorite book I have a favorite series, Heavy Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. It's basically uh, my biggest inspiration for Unavowed. It's basically, Unavowed is what happens when Dave realizes he'll never get the Dresden Files license. The date that techno that the next game is going to be out, Old Skies. <laughs> well, the next game is Nighthawks. No, yeah, you asked oh, the wrong no. question. You blew it. The next game is Nighthawks. So that's going to be like hopefully by the by the end of the year for sure. Yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun. We appreciate uh, spending 
four and a half minutes on the <laughs> our two minutes. Our, our four two and a half minutes, minutes on the two minute thing. Okay, that's great. <laughs> well, Oliver took up some of that time, so. Oh yeah, well. Yeah, I had to extend it a little. It's bit. worth it. It's worth so, it. So, but I'm glad you brought up Nighthawks um, mm -hmm. because now I don't want to get into the whole what is and isn't an adventure game all the time, but it's this one is certainly more adventure adjacent than mm -hmm. your usual game. Is it? Uh, a strategy to sort of move away from adventure games at all or no that's assuming I, I had any strategy to begin with so it's not so much a strategy as like i like it sure. i like him and i like what i like what he pitched to me and i like this game um so that's just it like it's it's just something else that i like right so that's that's really my main criteria is do yeah. i like this yes let's go for it a little bit. Tell us a little bit about Old Skies. Okay, maybe, well, maybe um, we haven't heard. Oh, sure. It's it's a time travel story. Basically, it's a time travel story. You play a woman in Fia who works for a time travel agency, and her deal is that she takes clients into the past. Um, they have different reasons for wanting to go into the past. Um, they want to either re-experience something, change something small, or what have you. And so, you you kind of go with them to make sure nothing goes wrong. And nothing ever does. No, I'm not sure. That is a lie. When a lot is of it ever go, in sci-fi? A lot of things go wrong. Every, something goes wrong every time and you have to like fix it. So there's like, there's about six or seven individual chapters, all kind of very loosely connected together. Um, and it's just been kind of just fun working on it. Uh, like so, some of the stories are like more serious. Some are more funny. One is just completely bonkers off the wall it's a lot of fun um i'm currently working on now that's like a 9-11 story so that's been wrenching my heart mm -hmm. um but it's it's been it's been a while it's been a ride working on it and it and, and what was the inspiration in the graphical style uh well ben wanted to try doing high def art and i said go for it i don't know what all uh you said publicly about the game so far so i'm not trying to put you on the spot here but like mm -hmm. What different eras do you get to visit? Um, well, uh, you visit, you go to the 1870s, you go to Prohibition era, 1920s, you go to the uh, distant past of the 2020s. <laughs> the distant, Ooh, uh, the distant who'd want to go back there? The, the, the her present is the 2060s, okay. um, and she also goes to the 2040s, uh, and you go to um to the turn of the century, you know, uh, 2001, and you go to um, the last mission that, I, that I'm that i working on next, you go to the 90s. I mean, well, sure. If I, if I used, if I still did pixel art, I'd get complaints of, oh, you're still using pixel art? Yeah. I went HD, I was like, oh, I like the pixel so much. Um, for a hot minute, we were making a, a game in 3D, and we the, the Techno Babylon sequel, which sadly got put on hold because right. the developer um, is dealing with some health problems. I don't want to get into that, but that actually looked decent for like uh, it looks decent. You know, it was 3D, and we got some complaints about that too. Yeah. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I hope it's not, you know, like I hope it's not like Simon 3D, the, or, <laughs> like the worst 3D adventure game ever made. We'll right, do our yeah. best. Um, <laughs> The one thing that always annoys me whenever I see uh, reviews of any of our games, mm -hmm. um, and you you guys don't do this, and um, you know back when you were with Adventure Gamers, they didn't do it either because it would be silly for for an adventure game website to do this. There, when any review of our games always starts with like a paragraph about adventure games were big in the '90s, and then they died, and then they had a high, mm -hmm. then they had a return, and then they died again, and that yeah. that has to be like the way they start all the reviews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that drives me nuts but that's not oh, yeah. something specific to adventure games that's something specific that's a trend with adventure game reviewers yeah. <laughs> i don't know that doesn't count this is perfect for for dave we decided that today we're going to do top five modern pixel art games oh that's right so we were thinking that we might just throw a rule we could choose one we could choose one pixel art game from the one Wajidai Wajidai. Game. Wajidai. yeah because otherwise <laughs> we could fill up all we could fill up so many of our lists uh -huh. on that. so we're gonna let you go first you're the guest and dave you could choose your games if you want okay um well i mentioned uh, perfect tides uh earlier Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Again, this isn't in, in any particular order, um, yeah. mm -hmm. but that Perfect Tides is just a game that surprised the heck out of me. Like that, and he's scratching the couch. Come on, buddy. Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. That's a no. Nobody. Yeah. Well, he uh, looked at you like, uh uh. He yeah, I own this house. Him. My pixel art game that uh, was number that was number two on our list in in 2022 is is Norco. That's right. Just I haven't played a, that one yet. Just a, a a fabulous game 
fabulous game. I mean, I, 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 I rave about it all of the time and people don't want me to rave about it again, I'm <laughs> sure. So we'll just move that run on over to Jack, your turn. Okay, the first one is going to be uh, my Wajidai game. <laughs> and I got to say, see, I'm sort of stealing two games in one turn, but my favorite Wajidai game is the Blackwell Epiphany. Let's see. Uh, in terms of pure pixel art games, um, I really enjoyed Kingdom. And it just, mm -hmm. it's it's very, you know, low res, but it just, it's just beautiful. Like, oh, man. Oh, should I just get my, my Wajidai out of the way? Let, let's go get for it. it. Let's I can't. Just, I can't. Let, let's get know? techno techno Babylon out of the way. I know it's one <laughs> that it, it's one that's uh, not one that you worked on particularly yourself. It's but, still uh, one of my favorites. I, I love techno Babylon. If if I was to cheat, uh, I would just say uh, the whole uh, the whole Blackwell game catalog as a whole. But I don't think we could do that. That's uh, that's that's. Kind I mean, of, I I also consider. I mean, there, there's a reason why I only sell Blackwell as a bundle now mm -hmm. because I think it, that's how it should be played. Is like one like long yeah thingy one long thingy that's the thingy. technical term my next game is a thingy because it defies any sort of description um it's called there is no game wrong dimension and it's just an absolutely fabulous game that uh, like i said defies description defies gameplay but i played a game called the captain uh, um yeah. and it's it's again very i i have always love when pixel art like it's it's kind of when it's le when they lean into the style mm -hmm. and the captain really does that like each world you visit it's a sci-fi game where you play a ship captain uh, each world you visit is very simple but very unique i'm gonna go with uh lamplight city <laughs> nice good slap game okay my next one uh I Again, I'm picking ones that don't necessarily look like adventure games, at least at first glance, but uh, To the Moon by Freebird Games. Oh, okay, easy. Dark Side Detective. Yeah, uh, that was my choice. So I'm going to pivot. I'm going to uh, have to go with uh, with Low Hanging Fruit, uh, or at least it's a, pop a very popular game. I'm going to go with Thimbleweed Park. Okay. I, yeah. I, yeah. I adored 99.89% of the game. <laughs> And not the ending, <laughs> not not the ending. You're not uh, alone, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, not the ending. Just uh, mm. <laughs> uh, my next one is going to be, I think, uh, Virtua Verse. Uh, I'm going to go with a, an obscure one. Um, I, I again, a game I haven't finished, but I, it's just so pretty. Um, Gestalt. But, uh, this is a free game, yeah. and uh, it's it's the King's Quest Two a remake. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. By the at the time they called the they called the company Tierra. Remember that? Or AGDI. Yeah. It's, it's and... AGDI. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Um, yeah, my last one is sort of uh, two games in one, just because it recently got a sequel. Uh, Backbone was the original, and then the most recent one was Tales: The Backbone Preludes. All right, I'll jump on the grenade and buy one <laughs> and write it off to, for the good of the company. But I know oh, so yeah. hard. <laughs> this was a whole lot of fun. Oh, yeah. thank you. It was fun for me too. Yeah, it was really neat to have. Feel free to edit me so I sound smart. <laughs> well, I do it to myself. <laughs> so that's the only way I can kind of squeak squeak by with all these uh, <laughs> intelligent people that we have on. I just hope he cuts my time. parts out because I just bring them. Mm -hmm.